Mohammed Munir, who joins me from Lancaster here in the UK, where he's a virologist at Lancaster University. Thank you very much for joining us, Mohammed. So, as we said, the death toll now from the coronavirus outbreak has risen to 170 and has reached every region in mainland China. So, what does that mean in terms of the spread of the virus? Yes, uh, I mean, this virus has just a month history and it has uh, spread in all dimensions, not only within China, Asia and also um, overseas. So basically, if we look onto the disease uh, spread pattern and the disease uh, uh, clinical picture, this is not very far uh, or very different from the SARS coronavirus, uh, which caused uh, pandemics back in 2003. So based on all of these characteristics, this virus uh, have all those benchmarks to call it highly infectious and could be one of the major concern in coming time. Well, at the moment, we know that the numbers outside of China are relatively small, but does it have the potential of a much larger outbreak, do you think? Uh, yes, indeed. I mean, if we uh, talk about this uh, virus specifically two weeks or uh, three weeks before, probably the information wasn't enough to declare any uh, real concern about it. But as it stands now, we have not only confirmed human to human cases, but also symptom less uh, spread of the virus uh, between people has also been reported and confirmed, which are really the major worries uh, for these kind of viruses, because that is actually one of the major concern at this moment because what we see is in the SARS coronavirus, that was not the situation. In SARS coronavirus, every person who was spreading the infection or shedding the virus, they were showing clinical sign. But this virus has some unique characteristics that are making it a little more special. Therefore, the number of cases that what we are seeing now are certainly underrepresented. So the, the spectrum of this uh, uh, spread would be even more higher if all those reported would be uh, brought in calculations. Well, Mohammed, we're expecting in the next half an hour a press release um, from the World Health Organization whether it will be declared a global health emergency. What are you expecting? Well, uh, to be honest, I have been expecting even in the first meeting that they should declare it as a public health emergency primarily based on the scientific line. So if you uh, compare this outbreak with the 2009 um, influenza, uh, swine influenza outbreak, when the uh, public health emergency was declared, and you just simply compare this one month scenario, this scenario is not any different than what we've seen in 2009 with the swine flu. And the, as, as we have been discussing, the cases are increasing significantly, virus is becoming fitter, and it becoming much more adopted to the environment. So I apparently do not see any reason why we would not be able to uh, declare this as a public health emergency. What we do understand that last time they gave reasons uh, for not declaring it a public health emergency, stating that there are only 25 percent people who were um, infected uh, severely and it was only people who were having underlying causes. Those were the ones those died with this infection. But that is not the case anymore. We have seen people who were healthy, they became sick. So it's not only the underlying causes. So uh, we, we are eagerly waiting uh, for the outcome of this evening. My expectation is that they should not let this uh, situation get aggravated any further if it already has not gone out of the hand. So if they would have declared emergency in the last meeting, the situation what we are seeing now, it would have been avoided. For example, the cases those are reported in, in Germany and France in the Europe, these could definitely would have been avoided if the emergency would have been established uh, in the first meeting. Well, we'll definitely be going live to that press conference uh, in Geneva later on um, in the next half an hour. So as you as we said, Mohammed, but um, just very briefly, um, we can see that every country is acting in their own way when it comes to the evacuation and thereafter the quarantine process. But should there not be a consensus? Well, that is actually the important point, because if there is no um, uh, WHO public health emergency of international concern, then there wouldn't be any concrete international uh, plan in place. Every country would be open to uh, execute the plan they uh, they seem appropriate. And that is one of the major challenges with not having a public health emergency. And literally, it would not impose any uh, major um, uh, financial or, or infrastructure complication if there would be a public health emergency. The difference would it make is that you will have a concrete, uh, a consensus approach to apply internationally so that all the infections could be contained. 
Having said that, uh, the quarantine time is pretty much standard, which is 14 days, which will be applied by every country. Uh, however, how they would execute uh, lifting of the people, to bringing them back to their countries and where they will apply these quarantine measures and what will happen after the quarantine period is ended and how would they keep monitoring the disease, uh, the, the suspected and vulnerable cases afterward. That is something every country would decide on their own, depending on the way they, they, they monitor such kind of inf infections because there is no any consensus established by the WHO. Well, thank you very much for that insight and that update there, Mohamed Munir.